Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here, your source for gaming, tech, emulation, and open source news. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off talking about Pretendo, the free and open source replacement for Nintendo 3DS and Wii U servers, and Pretendo's got a brand new update. So Pretendo has just announced that the Wii U account settings app is now officially supported. You can now change user data, including country and region, right from the Wii U. Next up, we're talking about emulation on iOS, and I think we're getting closer to finding the limits or barriers that Apple is going to allow on the App Store. If you remember a while back when Apple decided to allow emulators on the App Store, they said it was restricted to retro consoles. However, there wasn't a clear definition as to what is actually considered a retro console. And now we're getting a little bit closer to that definition. For those who may be unaware, UTM stands for Subscribe to Mr. Sujano, and it's an app that allows you to run a virtual machine on iOS. They say it can emulate any processor, run any operating system, it has fast emulation, high compatibility, it's free and open source, and it's easy to use. And they submitted this for approval to be used on the App Store. And unfortunately, it appears that Apple has officially rejected UTM from the App Store. Here's UTM's announcement. After almost two month long review process, Apple has rejected UTM SE from the iOS App Store as well as from notarization for third-party app stores. The reasoning is that Rule 4.7, which Apple recently introduced that allows for Delta, PPSSPP, and other emulators to be allowed, does not apply to UTMSE. The App Store Review Board determined that PC is not a console, regardless of the fact that there are retro Windows DOS games for the PC that UTMSE can be useful in running. Additionally, Apple's stance is that UTMSE is not allowed on third-party marketplaces either, because Rule 4.7 also applies to notarization review guidelines. They also go on to say, We will adhere by Apple's content and policy decision because we believe UTMSE, which does not have JIT, is a subpar experience and isn't worth fighting for. We do not wish to invest any additional time or effort trying to get UTMSE in the App Store or third-party stores unless Apple changes their stance. Now, there are a couple of things I want to point out about this announcement. UTMSE is a subpar version of UTM. It's basically UTM without JIT. You can still get UTM by sideloading if you wanted to. On top of that, this phrase right here, PC is not a console. It doesn't say anything about retro consoles, so I'm very curious to see if Switch emulation is permissible on the App Store. Since the App Store has allowed 3DS, I think their definition of retro consoles is very flexible. Maybe they've even relaxed it altogether. Anyways, here in my opinion, it goes to show that Android is the superior way to emulate as opposed to iOS. While I'm not knocking iOS, I mean emulators on the App Store in general is a massive win for emulation. At the same time, I think we can see the limitation to emulations on Apple devices, and that is Apple itself. But moving on, and this one's a quick one. We're talking about Mega Man on the NES, but on the SNES. So Infidelity, who is well known for porting NES games to the SNES, has has just ported Mega Man 3 to the SNES. In fact, Infidelity already has Rev A up and available. I'll drop a link to this tweet in the description below in the event that you wanted to learn more about it. And speaking about Mega Man, next up we're talking about Mega Man Mania, and this fan project seems amazing. So Mark Max says, Mega Man Mania is a fan project that aims to remaster and colorize the five Mega Man titles on Game Boy. Once the five games are released, work will also begin on a compilation for the Game Boy Advance. And take a look at these images. Take a look at the gameplay. It looks really good. I'll drop a link to this tweet in the description below and feel free to check it out. I mean, I liked these games on the Game Boy originally and seeing them colorized like this is something else entirely. Let me know your thoughts about Mega Man on the Game Boy in the comments below. Unfortunately, these have not released just yet, but taking a look at that footage, and I would argue things are progressing very well. I'll be keeping a very close eye on it. Moving on, and we're talking about a brand new ROM hack. It's over on romhacking.net, and it's called Blast Wind, and it's not talking about farts. It's an English translation for a game on the Sega Saturn. Blast Wind was a shmup that was released back in 1997 exclusively in Japan. 
And in addition to translating this game to English, they've added English narration into the intro sequence. They've added a newly dubbed voice actor for the leader of the Gorn Empire. There's script injections to include fixes for the original English portions of the game. They fixed the audio. There's much more audio balancing now so you can hear the music as opposed to just the sound effects. And they've added a 1cc guide. And speaking about patches, next up we're talking about something I haven't checked out yet but seems interesting. So Yakuza 2 Restored is out. It's an enhancement patch for the original PS2 version of Yakuza 2. So according to the Internet Archive, Yakuza 2 Restored introduces a revised script, improved FMV quality, and redone graphical elements. And there are two different versions of this patch, one that's optimized for 16x9 and the other one that's optimized for 4x3. If you are curious about this one, I'll drop a link to the tweet in the description below and feel free to check it out. There's also a very detailed change log. Next up, we're quickly talking about laptops that are purpose-built for Linux, specifically by Tuxedo Computers. And Tuxedo has just teased something about ARM, or rather just announced something. Tuxedo on ARM is coming, specifically an ARM notebook with a Snapdragon X Elite SoC on it. So Tuxedo says, we recently presented a prototype of the ARM notebook we are working on at the Computex Computer Trade Fair in Taiwan. On the software side, a port of Tuxedo OS with KDE Plasma to the ARM platform is our goal for this project running internally under the working title Draco. They go on to say something that some people may not like to hear. The SoC is not suitable for high-end notebooks or gaming behemoths. It is more suited to business class workhorses such as the Pulse or the Infinity Book Pro notebooks. So let me know your thoughts about this one in the comments below. Do you think the industry is shifting towards ARM? Would you be interested in an ARM notebook for Windows or Linux in the future or are you happy with the current architecture? Next up we're talking about some games and first up on the docket is Super Polygon Grand Prix and it appears this game is in final testing. Unfortunately I don't have a release date for just yet but apparently there's a 30 car field, 20 unlockable cars, and 40 different tracks. It seems like it's going to be a pretty beefy game. Next up, we're talking about Call of Duty Black Ops 6, and there was a gameplay trailer that was revealed that excited people and worried others. So according to Xbox.com, Call of Duty Black Ops 6 Standard Edition will be a whopping 309.85 gigabytes. Now, I'm not certain if that's just for this game or if it's for absolutely everything, but that is a whole lot of memory. On top of that, it's stated that this game is going to be always online, even for single player content. So let me know your thoughts about this one in the comments below. I think the always online portion may be a moot point if the campaign is super short and you have to play online multiplayer anyway. And speaking about Xbox, Call of Duty 6 was part of the massive Xbox game showcase that just occurred. If you wanted to see every game listed out, Video Games Chronicle has you covered. I mean, the showcase itself is over two hours in length and there are no timestamps, but Video Games Chronicle has broken out every single game and linked to it. And there are over 30 games here. I'll drop a link to this page in the description below and I do recommend checking it out. And let me know your thoughts about the showcase in the comments below. Did you like it? Did anything surprise you? Are you excited about any of these games? For example, there's a new Gears of War coming out, a new Indiana Jones. Well, we already knew about that one. A Microsoft Flight Simulator, Fable gameplay, Perfect Dark gameplay, and even more. Unfortunately, during the showcase, Microsoft did not announce their rumored brand new handheld, but they did announce three new versions of their Xbox Series X and S. So they announced the Xbox Series S 1TB in Robot White, Xbox Series X 2TB Galaxy Black Special Edition, and the long-rumored Xbox Series X 1TB Digital Edition in Robot White. They say all three will launch this holiday 2024, and to be honest with you, considering it's all digital, I'm surprised they didn't announce a 2TB Digital Edition. Next up, we're quickly talking about Tropical, and they say Tropical is a simple app that lets you manage your emulators with an easy installation and updating process and Tropical just got a brand new update. So since the last release, they've added in support for a whole bunch of new emulators. For the DS, they've got Dismumi, Melon DS, and Nudes. For Game Boy and Game Boy Advance, we've got Gear Boy, Same Boy, Sky Emu, and VBAM. For N64, there's Simple 64. PS Vita has Vita 3K, and SNES has BSNES and SNES 9X. Now this one is big for some people. For Switch, they've added in Torzu. Xbox and Xbox 360, we've got XEMU and Xenia Canary. 
And for Android, they've added in WinLater, PS Vita, so Vita 3K, Dolphin MMJR2 VBI, and Citra MMJ. For the Windows version, they say there's a better homepage UI, and also they've switched to a rolling release model and an auto-updater. And for the Android version, install should be more reliable. Next up, we're quickly talking about PS2 emulation with PCSX2. And if you keep your PCSX2 up to date and recently it's been crashing on startup, there might be a fix for you. So according to PCSX2, GitHub Actions updated their Visual Studio for the build runners. So if you're using old VC runtimes, PCSX2 will likely crash on startup. To resolve this, please update your VC redist here. I'll drop a link to this tweet in the description below and feel free to check it out. They include a link to something that may fix your problems. And speaking about up-to-date versions, next up we're quickly talking about PlayStation 3 emulation with RPCS3. And if you keep your version of RPCS3 up to date, you may have noticed some improvements. So according to the RPCS3 team, there's been fixes to accuracy and performance, and stability is also improved. So at the time of filming, build 0.0.32-16586 is the latest update. I'll drop a link to it in the description below, and feel free to check it out. And last up here, we're talking about something that I'm a little bit on the fence about. It's a free and open source alternative to Windows Recall, the highly controversial Windows Recall. So this project is up on GitHub. I'll drop a link to it in the description below. And they say Open Recall is a fully open source privacy first alternative to proprietary solutions like Microsoft Windows Recall or Limitless's Rewind AI. With Open Recall, you can easily access your digital history, enhancing your memory and productivity without compromising your privacy. So although at this time I'm not really interested in this kind of software, at the same time having a free and open source alternative that focuses on privacy in my opinion is probably a better option. Anyways here, this one is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux, so it's not strictly Windows. Let me know your thoughts about this one in the comments below. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. We talked about a bunch today. Let me know your thoughts about absolutely any of it in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your state. <laughs>